Hello, everybody. Saturday. And we had some games on Thursday and Friday. Interesting coaching fiascos in the Lion game and in the Raiders KC game. Unbelievable that the NFL puts out a product like this. And they still make millions of dollars. So if you make that much money, maybe you don't give a damn what you're putting on the field. But Eberflus got fired for what he did at the end of the game, which was absolutely a disaster. And then the end of the KC Raider game easily. I don't know if you can you can blame it a little bit on the coach. He probably should should have kicked the field goal there instead of playing another play. If he didn't play another play, they would have lined up for the field goal, and Carlson probably would have made it, and the Raiders would have upset the Chiefs. Why does that matter? Well, it matters to a lot of people. Well, how about money line parlays on those two big favorites? How about the survivor contest? Most people were on those two big favorites. They easily could have lost. And the prize money in that is only 14 and a half billion. Eh, 14 and a half billion is nothing, right? Eh, not so much. Let's look at the Sunday games. You got the Texans at the Jaguars. The Texans, three and a half point favorite and 44 and a half. Now, Texans have been in, oh man, they've been in reverse. Stroud having a not a not good year. He's not certainly not what he was last year. They've had some injuries. You know, this is what happens. You get right, riding high on a young kid. He's going to have a lot of learning to do, but he's got talent. He'll be good. He's going to have a good career if he stays healthy. The Chargers at the Falcons. The Falcons. You know, the problem with the Falcons is they don't put enough pressure on the quarterback so people can pass on them. And guess what the Chargers have? They got a good passing game. They got a good quarterback and they got some good wide receivers and they have a hell of a good coach. They're coming off the tough loss against the Ravens. Now, if the Chargers, Quentin Johnson could have caught the ball a couple of times. That might have been a different game. The Chargers are one. 47 and a half. The Titans at the Washington Commanders, much like Houston, Washington started the year this year off really, really well, but they're regressing. The Titans, if Levis can stop throwing the ball to the wrong uniform, this Titan team can actually be decent. Now, the commanders are five and a half and 44 and a half, and I'm going to tell you right now, that's too many points. I just don't believe that the Washington commanders, playing as they are, should be that big of a favorite over anybody. Arizona Cardinals at Minnesota. Arizona coming off the game in Seattle, which was a division game in weather. They don't play good in weather. But Murray's a good quarterback. The Vikings are a good team. I think the Vikings are like... Nine and two, but nobody really talks about them as a viable contender for the Super Bowl. But you know, the Cardinals are actually pretty good too. On the West Coast, they got Seattle, they got the Niners, they got the Rams, but the Cardinals are right there. Tough team. I don't think this is going to be all that easy for the Vikings. Three and a half is a short number, but I think if you could take four, that might be a viable take. The Colts at the Patriots, two teams that are probably not going anywhere. Colts are a little bit better, no question. They're two and a half point favorite at and uh, at the New England Patriots, and the total is forty four and a half. I can't really like this team, these te- this these oof, these two teams because they're inconsistent. You just never know what you're going to get. Here's a good game: Steelers at the Bengals. This is a big division game huge Bengals are three and 47 and a half this is life and death for the Bengals but Pittsburgh with Tomlin nobody can really explain a team that doesn't get a lot of respect for the talent they have on the field on offense they just keep doing things right and they keep winning you got to give that to Tomlin, and he's a hell of a coach. He gets a lot out of less. And the Bengals get a lot of less out of more. 
their defense has been horrible, but their offense is basically unstoppable. But the Bengals are three and 47 and a half. I lean Bengals. I like Bengals. But I really question that defense. I just don't know what you're going to get out of them. Seahawks at Jets. Well, the Seahawks are in contention. NFC West, and I mentioned the teams out there against the Jets. Aaron Rodgers wants out. Aaron Rodgers want, doesn't want to play. Aaron, da, 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 da. And the owner is a mess. They got rid of Salah. When Salah goes, their defense started to fall apart. The Jets are a mess. They are a mess. Isn't it amazing? The Jets and the Giants in the biggest market we have in the country, neither team can put a team together that's respectable. Seahawks are the right favorite, in my opinion, but they're only minus one and 42 and a half. I would think they should be bigger favorite because the Jets could be in a quit mode. I mean, it's not team, players don't quit because they're playing for their jobs. Not every player has a guaranteed contract that they're coming back next year. A lot of these players will be out of the league. So they're going to go out there and play. They have a reason to play. So we go there. That's the Jet game. I favor Seattle in that spot. The Rams at the Saints. I have not understood the line on this game, and I know everybody I talk to likes the Rams in this spot. But the Saints, they're at home. A two-and-a-half-point favorite, or dog, I should say, 49 and a half. I like the Rams too. I like McVay. I like Stafford. But, you know, the Saints, they can play. They, they, a home dog in this spot, cross country trips for the Rams who played two terrible home games and barely got, yeah, they beat the Patriots. I'm not big on beating the Patriots. It's not, it's not a big deal. I don't, I know I'm going against the grain here. I favor the Saints. Everybody else likes the other side. Am I crazy? Tampa Bay at the Panthers. I love the way Baker Mayfield is playing. This guy is a warrior. Comes out of Oklahoma, first round draft choice, goes to Cleveland. Cleveland messes up everybody. Then he goes to the Rams for a little bit. And then he goes to the Tampa. They win the division two years in a row. The Panthers, I don't know. Bryce Young, can he come up with a, a decent game here? But the Bucs are a big favorite. And this is a big division favorite, minus six and 46 and a half. I cannot lay the points with the Bucs. It's too big a number. I don't recommend teasers these days anymore because the bookmakers have made the prices so big on teasers and it, it it's hard to lay that kind of number but that would be the only thing i could do with this eagles ravens you talk about two talented teams of the five really quality teams that could lift the lombardi trophy in the super bowl these are two of the teams that could do it Ravens, three, 51 and a half. Both teams can run the ball. Tremendous running attacks. And the physicality of the Eagles in the second half has been amazing. Second half bet on the Eagles is not a bad bet because they wear the, other, the opponent's defense down, and eventually they start to take over with that running game and – Opens up Hurts for his passing game. And he's a strong runner as well. But the Ravens are excellent. Lamar Jackson, Henry in the backfield, brutal. So this game, maybe it's an over. If the weather is good, it could be an over because you're going to open it up. It's going to open up. Eventually, you're going to wear down the defenses and it will open up. But what I do like, Maybe the Ravens in the first half and the Eagles in the second half. That might be an easy way, not an easy way, nothing's easy. 49ers at the Bills. This is another huge game. The problem here is the Bills are solid. They're healthy for the most part. Allen has been playing great. They're a six-point favorite. I've seen this game as high as seven. 
But it's hard to lay seven against the Niners. This is a Super Bowl team, quality coaching. Purdy's been a little hurt, though, and it's going to be the weather forecast, and you can't always trust the weather forecast, but it should be snowing and it should be cold. That's not Niner weather. It's that simple. Buffalo, it's Buffalo weather. But I can't lay six against the Niners. I just can't do it. It's too big a number. But if the Niners are going anywhere, they got to come alive here and, and they got to stay alive in this game. I don't like them to win the game. So if you want to combine something, maybe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Bills in a teaser, even though you might be laying a big price. It's, uh, that would be tough. And of course, you go to Monday night, which we're looking at the Browns at the at the Broncos. Broncos five and a half. Knicks has been playing very well. Good coaching. The Browns are a mess. However, if you notice two weeks ago, they went to the Saints. Everybody thought the Browns are going to come alive. They got their offensive line back. Winston's a quarterback. A little revenge game for Winston because he played at the Saints. And they went out there. They were horrible in that game. The Saints beat them up. Now, then they come back in their home dog against the Steelers. Now, the Steelers are a rivalry game in division and the Steelers and the Browns are only two hours away from each other by car. You don't even have to get on an airplane. And the Browns won the game in the snow. It was a great game to watch because I love watching natural turf, snow, weather. It was fun. It was fun. But the Browns won that game. Now they go on the road to Denver. The game means absolutely zero to the Browns. They're going to the playoffs. It's an ego game. It's a pride game. But for the Broncos, it means a lot because they are in the playoffs if they can continue to keep winning. So five and a half, that's tough to lay. But the only side I could play in this game would be the Broncos. Anyway, that's my report for this Saturday for Sunday's games. Good luck to everybody. And make sure you go to ProLine TV. Go to YouTube. Go to ProLine TV, subscribe, go to jimfeist.com as well. We'll have the audio version of this recording there. So anyway, good luck to everybody, and we'll see you next week.